So joining us to discuss all of this and more is Andy Mock. He's a senior research fellow at the Centre for China and Globalisation. Good to see you again, Andy. What are some of the benefits and de uh, deficits of, of automated factories, do you think? Well, thanks for having me on today, Sally. Well, you know, when we hear this term smart manufacturing, it might sound uh, very obscure and esoteric, but it's actually incredibly important. Um, because, first of all, it can play a very significant role in uh, global competitiveness, uh, economic growth, innovation, and sustainability. So I think this is uh, the main reason why so much attention uh, is being paid to this. And you mentioned the key technologies involved. So, of course, there's 5G. Uh, but more broadly, I would say it's Internet of Things, uh, it's artificial intelligence, it's robotics, and it's cloud computing. And uh, certainly, I think it's, uh, we're on the cusp of some very, very exciting things, and uh, a lot of them are happening in China. So do you think there are some industries that are better off with automation while others less so? I think anything that uh, needs to be manufactured that in, uh, includes any sort of tangible product uh, will certainly not only benefit, but again, uh, be transformed uh, by smart manufacturing. And one way we can think about it, it's like uh, the nervous system of an organization going from being capable of simple reflexes to cognitive processing. And this can span industries from uh, consumer goods like Hi-R, uh, heavy manufacturing like Sani, uh, of course, companies like Huawei, uh, and even uh, foreign companies like Siemens operating in China are getting on this uh, smart uh, manufacturing trend. What about the trickle-down effect on worker employment? How are workers integrated into the transition to automation? No, that's a key point, and I think this is uh, certainly uh, one of the potential bottlenecks, but also a, an opportunity as well, in that uh, when we hear this term lights out manufacturing, meaning that uh, a factory, a manufacturing facility is so automated uh, that people are not involved, so you can keep all the lights out. Um, but that actually means you need uh, new sorts of people that are very, very highly skilled uh, at working with these machines, supporting them, maintaining them. So, of course, that means uh, education. It may mean retraining. And I think this is something that uh, China really shines at, being able to uh, articulate long-term objectives, uh, bring to bear, and most importantly, coordinate uh, these resources across educational institutions, uh, national level government, provincial level government, local level government, um, and again, bring a complex set of resources to bear um, in a synchronized, uh, holistic way. And uh, workforce is certainly one of the key elements. So what would you then say are the economic benefits? Do you think that this is more China focused in terms of, of benefits or is there a global impact too? No, I think there certainly uh, is a global impact. So uh, the companies, the countries uh, that are able to successfully adopt uh, smart manufacturing will, of course, uh, be more globally competitive. That helps their economic growth. And we can think about uh, that this helps consumers and businesses all around the world that uh, rely on these products. Uh, but we also have to recognize the impact on sustainability as well. So one of the big uh, advantages of smart manufacturing is higher throughput, uh, less, wa uh, less waste, um, something that's called uh, first pass yield. So meaning that uh, there are no defects uh, the first time uh, a product is run through um, a, a manufacturing uh, production line. And all of these have uh, sustainability impacts. Um, and again, it makes the world a better place because this also brings speed as well. It allows uh, manufacturing plants to quickly shift to new products uh, to be more flexible. And again, I think this benefits uh, everyone around the world, businesses and consumers. All right. As always, Andy Mock, thank you for your time.